the seller is allowed to go, dude. I don't know. I don't know. And he is not required to know. I don't want to look because if I find out something, then I have to disclose it. If I want to play fat, dumb, and happy and do not have any kind of lead-based paint study done on my house, I'll just mark, I have no knowledge because I don't. And I'm not required to know. That's important to understand because if they are not required to know, the purchaser still has the right to know. The buyer still has the right. So therefore, the buyer has the right to actually test your property if you're the seller. They get a 10-day window with which to say, dude, I understand you don't know. I also understand you're not required to know, but I want to know. So the buyer has the right to have the seller's house tested for lead-based paint, and he would mark right here. I want to have that house tested. And they could do that as part of the actual um, home inspection. Now, the second page of this, this buyer could also say, okay, you don't know, I'm going to waive my right to have the property inspected. So notice he has to have one of these two, and I've kind of moved this form by accident over here. He has to have one of these two marked, right? Either he is going to exercise his right to have the uh, house tested with the 10-day, or he's going to waive his right. Now, notice what letter F says. Here is the first time that you, as an agent, are going to go on this form. That's right. The agent is going to say, yes, I explained the whole lead-based paint. Yes, I may have given him this pamphlet. So the agent would sign this. All right. So this is a very, very common form that you are going to use with the lead-based paint. And one of the common questions is, do we still use lead-based paint? Yes, we do. We just don't use it in the residential world. It is used because lead makes paint dry faster and it makes it hold its color longer. It makes it prettier. And so we used it in houses for that reason. If you get exposed to lead, it is very easy to find out. Well, the process is easy. Uh, because they have to, have to take invasive samples, a blood sample, a bone marrow sample. But those will tell you if you have been exposed. Now, the little bit of biology that I do want to cover here is the fact that lead affects all humans exactly the same. Doesn't matter if you're 2, 22, or 102. It affects or attacks or is uh, part of the same place on every human. But the places that it really attacks, like the nervous system, the brain cell stem, uh, all of these places are typically still in development while they're a child. That's why we have a lot more concern for children being exposed to lead-based paint than necessarily an adult. The growth platelets and bones, the central nervous system, um, all of these are done growing by the time a person is, you know, anywhere from 17 to 20 years old. Therefore, in the adults, it's not as damaging when exposed but we still don't like the idea. That exposure usually comes from either groundwater, soil, where the lead has fallen, or paint chips. 
Now, it's not listed there on the number four that I've got highlighted, but paint is another common one. They banned the use of lead-based paint in the residential world in 1978. Guarantee that test question, all right? You need to know that date. It is 1978. Um, there's what I was telling you. It's not required under state law for the homeowner to actually know. They have the ability to go, I don't know. So ignorance is bliss in this particular example. And we talked about that there has to be pamphlets that are given. I would suggest now, even though you're still a student, you're going to be practicing here in a couple months, go out and search and just Google, you know, lead-based paint pamphlet. It will find it and you can download it to your computer for free. You need to download that because as a working professional, it will be something that you need. The next topic is radon. Radon is a daughter product of radioactive substances and it will come from the earth. It comes from the earth up. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless gas that you cannot detect without special detection equipment, all right? And when it gets built up in houses, it can become a carcinogen. What does carcinogen mean? It is cancer causing. Matter of fact, radon is what we call an A1 carcinogen, meaning we actually have human proof that it caused cancer. So exposure to radon is a bad thing. Now, you guys are very familiar with this concept of a sump pump, right? A sump pump goes in the basement or in the crawl space, and when the water forms, all that water runs into the pump, and then the pump pumps it outside. We have a very similar thing for radon, all right? If you have been tested, or if your property has been tested, and you have found to have high radon levels, and the radon level that we are actually looking for is what they call four picocuries, all right? Does anybody know what pico means? That's 10 to the minus nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I have heard the analogy. I don't know if this is true, so I'll take this with a grain of salt. How small this number is, if you covered the state of Texas in ping pong balls, and four of them were painted red. That's the number we're looking for. That's how small this number is. This is the limit above which it is considered dangerous. So you can have a test done. And if you remember back when we were talking about home inspectors and we talked about add-ons, this could be one of the add-on examples that you talk to your home inspector and say, okay, we need a home inspection. But my buyer client also wants a radon test done. And that home inspector says, okay, I can do that, but it's an extra $50 or $70 for that exam. Okay, that's fine. We just want it done. Now, radon, you can actually get one of these home detesting kits, and it looks like basically a tuna can. That's about the size of it. If you think of a tuna can, you pull the lid off of it, and you put it in the area that you want to check. The downside is you've got to let it set for 24 hours. So then you come back the next day, and if the gel in that can has changed colors, that is because there was an interaction with radon, and that is the trigger to say, yes, I have radon in this space. So you can do a home testing kit on your own home to do that. That's the home testing kit. There are radon professionals that have a much 
better, more accurate system, but you can do it at home. But what we were talking about was if that space proves positive, there is actually this radon mitigation system, which is very analogous to a sump pump, all right? So you would put this system in your basement and it is a ventilation system where that it would suck all of the air along the floor of the basement and then it would suck it up and through an exhaust fan would blow it out into the atmosphere outside just like the sump pump does for water. So there are ways to mitigate that. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a very colorful, very odorful gas, right? If you've ever done the dissect the frog when you were in high school and that really pungent smell, that is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is actually an embalming fluid or a glue, and it is used a lot in like press board where they take all the chunks and they press it together and they form a board. Well, how it gets held together is through a formaldehyde compound. It was also used as insulation. So you could see it in houses. You would see it a lot of times if there were uh, paneling on the inside of a house, they might put that for glue on the inside of the paneling and then stick it to the wall. That glue might have contained formaldehyde. It was listed as a hazardous pollutant in 1990. And if it dries or when it dries, it will off gas a very deadly gas and it's called off gassing. So that liquid glue dries, it will create a vapor that is an off gas and it does cause sickness and in some cases death. <clears throat> there are tests that can be ran. Some states require a disclosure. I am licensed in about six different states. None of the states I'm licensed in require that. I am not sure how they could make that a disclosure because you don't know. I mean, if you bought a house that was new and the builder used some special glue that had it in there, how would you know without getting a list of everything that builder used? And a lot of times when you go into like Home Depot or something in those glue sections or in the wood glue, you will see on the label, it'll say no formaldehyde. Now there's this really cool thing called UFFI. If you have ever seen that where you got a crack in the bricks at your house and you shake this stuff up, you spray it in and as it dry, it expands, creating a kind of a foam. That would be UFFI. We use this in a company. I used to work at a major airline. Uh, I was in the maintenance because I was the head or the director of the environmental health and safety. We used to use this to make the foam cushions that were in the seats. And you know, you hear the pilots go, oh, in case of an airplane landing, your cushions can be used as a flotation device. And when the pilot said that, I always think, well, not mine, because I just crapped all over it. I've got to use the 10-year-old kid's cushion beside me. <laughs> so um, that thing you spray and put in your house, they have now actually changed the active ingredient. So formaldehyde's not in it anymore, but it could be. And this UFFI would be, you know, liquid urea and liquid foam, and you'd mix them together and it would explode and make foam. Much like if you've ever done the Coca-Cola and the Mentos experiment, if you have not done the Coca-Cola and the Mentos, same concept. Take the liquid Coke and the solid uh, Mento and drop it one or two inside of a two liter Coke and see what happens. If you have never done that experiment, 
I would suggest you do it just so that you get an idea. And when you do it, I want you to do it in the middle of your living room floor. <laughs> no, don't do that, dude. Because that Coke shoots about 20 feet straight up in the air. It creates an exothermic reaction. And <clears throat> so same thing happens. The result of that experiment we used to do was this UFF hot. It would swell up and make a foam.